Hi, um, I'm Carl and I'm a safety and security architect. So I'm going to talk about attack surface and cherry and really to explain some of the higher level concepts of why do you need cherry and, and where does it help you. So, so let's take the simple, you know, simple embedded system. So um, we're going to concentrate on here on the SOC. So, for instance, we might have some interfaces coming into your SM, SOC, Tip, typical ones like, you know, you might have a UART. Obviously, on a more complex SOC, you'd have some like USB, you know, PCI, anything like that. So, basically, interfaces coming in, you do some processing on a CPU in here. And you do some operation, and typically, you know, you might send stuff out via I.O. and control something. Yeah, typically. So, just to explain attack surface. Attack surface is all of the possible ways that somebody externally can abuse what you have to do something that they want it to do, um, particularly cause damage or, or something like this. Um, it may not necessarily be completely feasible to do, maybe really difficult to do, but, but the attack surface considers all of these things. So this is from a hardware view. When we move to a software view, we get something quite similar. You know, we have our uh, application and we have interfaces coming into it via the APIs. So, you, you know, for your UART, you might have some code in here that handles your, your serial input. Um, you might have drivers, driver handling to control something. Um, you know, more complex systems, you might be processing input, which then goes to database or something like that, you know. So all, all of these ways are of, of ways of getting into the, the software and changing the behavior of the software. So, the interfaces are usually the bits that we need to consider. Um, anything in the, the core code itself, yes, can go wrong. We know we can get faults and, and problems with it. Um, but from a security point of view, the first thing we look at is how can somebody external influence the software and, and change its behavior? Um, because that's, that's the first thing an attacker is going to go for. So, in terms of our software and the, the interfaces, APIs, uh, obviously if you're programming in a language like C or C++, which is pretty common for embedded systems, still the majority of, of codes written in it, then a lot of these tend to be putting data into buffers. So, you know, you have a memory buffer, um, externally somebody's influencing to fill that buffer with data. Um, or you might have, for instance, a, a network um, stack, for instance. So it'd be like an Ethernet here, as an example. And you have a driver that's, you know, feeding information into a buffer or any other protocol. And the danger is, of course, um, with C or C++, is that there is no checking in memory. So if this is your memory, You may have the problem where if you write your protocol wrong and you don't check, you know, length of packets or anything like that, then an attacker can start to write data beyond your buffer end. And this is when things start getting dangerous because you might have some sensitive data already in there and now you've overwritten it. Like, for instance, that could be a password. So whether you're able to write or whether you're able to read from it, it's still still a problem. So what Cherry does, <coughs> Cherry is a memory access protection technology. It's in the hardware, so it allows you to put hardware bounds on buffers. So it says you can only write from here to here, you cannot write anymore. So for instance in C, if we declare um, an array, you know, very simple char buffer, say 10, something like that, then we can't write beyond that. 
And if you do write beyond it, you'll get a hardware exception at the CPU level. And essentially, that's the most basic protection use of Cherry. Um, protect your buffers. You can go a step further. You can also have permissions for this memory as well. So um, standard, read, write, execute for a start. So you can set this buffer to be read only, write only, execute, which means you don't think you don't need things like non-executable bits in Cherry. You just set a region of memory to say you can't execute from it. You can only read and write, or you can only read it. So if you're doing message queues, for instance, you could have one way um, between two different processes. You could have a write on one side and a read on another side to the same block of memory. Um, so Cherry itself allows you to start building quite complex um, constructs, security constructs on top of it. But at its very simplest, it's a memory protection technology.